Hi everyone, welcome to the weekly update. This is for the week of July 16th, so we're moving right along. Not a lot to report this week. Um, your quiz grades are graded. I posted that on the news feed yesterday. Um, overall, really, really great job, guys. Um, the average for the quiz was really good. Um, uh, take a look at the final problem for the quiz, which everyone had a little bit different variation of. Um, when you did the calculations, so please make sure you go in and review your feedback. If you missed the question, chances are um, it was because of the explanation part. Um, so make sure to go, if you did miss that part, make sure to go back and review in the text what the ratios are telling you and how to interpret them. So we need to go beyond either it's better and they're doing better than the industry average or they're doing worse than the industry average. You know, we can see that by comparison, but what does that really mean? What does return on assets mean? What does it mean if you are better or lower than the industry or higher or lower than the industry average? So take a look at that. All the feedback is there and ready to go um, on the quiz for you. So you'll have to scroll down to that question and click on view feedback. Now remember if you um, are wanting to look at your quiz, you'll have to log in through Lockdown Browser and navigate over just as if you were going to take the quiz and then you would just click on attempt one for that quiz. Um, I'm working this week to get through your homework assignments uh, from last week and get those graded so just be checking in your drop boxes for feedback. Um, my goal is to have those graded with feedback um, individually to each of you by the end of the week so just be checking through the week um, to keep updated on that. Um, let's take a look at the course schedule for this week and we'll look a couple weeks down the road. So we're here week of July 16th. This week we're going to be talking about financial risk, ret uh, required return. Um, so we're going to be talking about standard deviation, variance, uh, different things like that when it comes to required return in Chapter 10. Now the only thing we have due this week is our last quiz of the semester, Chapter 10 quiz. Opened yesterday at 8 a.m. Um, we'll close as with the other quizzes this coming Sunday, the 22nd at 11.59 p.m. So make sure to go in and um, get that quiz taken before this Sunday. And that is your only assignment due for this week. Now the last three weeks of class are approaching very quickly. So next week we have the week of July 23rd. Um, now I want to uh, give a special note here. What I've done here, there was a lot of information contained in these chapters, so what I've done is kind of taken and t uh, modified these chapters and put them together in one lecture. So we're going to cover a summary of chapters 11 through 13 where I'm giving you some highlights from each chapter. Now if I don't directly cover the topic in the slides, you are not going to be tested on it for your final exam. Now, the topics that I do cover in the slides uh, for the lecture notes, make sure to go in and read that information in the textbook so that you can expand on what I'm covering in the lectures themselves. Because you will be responsible for the material that is covered in the lecture slides, and that includes the sections um, in the chapters for 11 through 13 where that information is covered. So make sure to go in and review that. Next week we'll be talking again, um, summary of chapters 11 through 13 where we talk about co uh, capital cost structures, um, security markets, bonds and equity financing. Um, next week you're going to have problem case study number two, your last problem case study. That's going to be due by July 29th. Then when we move into the week of July 30th, um, we've got the same thing going on where we have a summary of chapters 14 through 16. We're talking about asset management. Um, risk analysis, capital budgeting, uh, different aspects like uh, of that. Um, again, you're not going to be, you're going to be responsible for the information that's covered in the lectures and the um, information that goes along with that in the textbook. But if we don't cover it in the lectures, um, you know, there's a lot of different formulas, different things like that that we don't cover in the lectures you're not going to be responsible for it for purposes of the final exam. So if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll be happy to talk to you about it. And that week we'll have our last ethical case study to do as well. Now remember, there's no right or wrong answer necessarily for these case studies. 
but I am looking to see how you're logically thinking through these issues. Um, there are rubrics available, so I am looking for different um, types of form, you know, different minor things, formatting to APA, your reference choice, uh, you know, simple things like making sure you have page numbers, which those are all very minor points. I am overall looking for your ability to critically think and support your position with evidence from class and from outside resources. Now, speaking of resources and references, um, just to build off the last case study that was used, make sure that you're cautious of the references that you use. They do need to be peer reviewed. Um, so it needs to come from an academic journal, um, a CDC website, uh, something to that effect. Um, you can't just pull something off of Wikipedia and use that as a reference. And make sure that your references are current. So the general rule is the last five to seven years, um, because anything over seven years is considered outdated. And particularly in healthcare, um, really, I would say, in my opinion, anything a year, a year to two years old it could be considered outdated just because of the nature of healthcare and how quickly it does change. Um, and then during the week of August 6th, we have our final exam number three, uh, where we're covering the information from modules five and six. Um, so that'll be this long-term financing, investment decisions. Um, pay special attention to the availability for the exam for the final. Uh, because it is the last week of the summer semester, we have a different um, availability schedule for that exam. So make sure that you plan accordingly. Um, any other questions, I'm here for you guys. Just let me know. Uh, again, email is going to be the quickest way to get a hold of me. I will be out of the office Thursday and Friday this week, but I will be checking my email. So if you do need me, please feel free to email me and I'll be happy to um, answer any questions that you may have. Other than that, I hope everyone has a great week and we'll see you back here next week.